I'm super happy about this video because honestly, the tool that I'm gonna show you that I use on my professional projects, you just saw the scene that I worked on and how I was able to bring it up and it had so much noise, but I was able to make it disappear just like that. So before we jump in, I gotta remind you, I'm doing a Cyber Monday special. It's for today only. And you have up until 11.59 PM Pacific time tonight to take advantage of it. You're getting $400 off my masterclass or 40% off. And let's see what's inside of CM. 266 seven plus curated on-demand lessons, 100 gigs worth of professionally shot practice footage, access to exclusive Facebook community, weekly coaching videos with tailor-made feedback, $1,000 cash prize for the FCM challenge winner, discounts on the best third-party plugins, Film Convert, Dehancer, Color Lab AI, Motion VFX, ShotDeck.com. FCM is the fastest growing color grading course. We have over 5,000 students in just three years. Our students are working with tier one companies such as Nikon, Porsche, Company3, DJI, Formula One, and the list goes on. So click on the link below to sign up for the masterclass and let's roll the intro. All right, so since this is not a look tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you a tool that I use to basically remove noise in the best way possible without losing any sharpness. What I'm gonna do is just show you very quickly my project settings. So right now, the timeline is set to DaVinci Wide Gamut, and then we're working in a DaVinci Wide Gamut sandwich here. Footage is shot on RED, so I'm taking it from RED to DaVinci Wide Gamut, and then Output Device Transform, I'm taking it from DaVinci to Rec. 709. Anybody have any questions? Check out the links in the description. So let's start with balance. First of all, this is the actual exposure of this shot, okay? So we have input device transform, output device transform. This is our log. And then after the conversion, this is where everything is sitting. So I went ahead and pushed it a bit over the top just so I can show you the power of this tool. We went under our HDR palette and global adjustment and I just pulled up about three stops. So we went from here to here and then in my primaries, just pulled back the contrast a tiny bit, uh, went under my offset and just uh, balanced out the image just a tiny bit. So then what we're gonna do is I went in and uh, made some adjustments in my look. All that's happening here is this. Under our custom curve, created a very subtle S curve and we ended up with something like this. It also cleans up like some of the unwanted like noise that we're getting. Biggest hero here was hue versus saturation. We basically pulled down the blue and then shifted some hues uh, using hue versus hue. And this is where we're at. So first what I'm gonna do is this. We're gonna use Resolve's built-in noise reduction and see how good that is. And spoiler alert, it is pretty good. You want to use your noise reduction before any change that you make in your note tree. Why is that? Think of it as like, basically there was no noise printed on the negative. So that's the idea. So what I'm gonna do is Shift S and just call it NR, noise reduction. We're gonna go inside Resolve's noise reduction tools and this is only available in the studio version. So if you don't see this, don't get confused. You're probably using a free version. You need a studio version to have this module right here. So I'm gonna go under temporal NR. I'm gonna set it to about three frames. I think that's good enough. And then for the motion estimate, we're gonna set it to better. Um, we're not gonna hold back at all. And then what I'm gonna do is uh, let's kind of punch in and see the area where we can see a lot of noise. So then when we add noise reduction, we'll be able to see how much it's affecting and helping. Now, I don't like to push it too far because this can get ugly really, really fast. So I'm gonna kind of show you my secret sauce numbers here where I like to put everything and then see, and hopefully it clears up and gets us an image that is more than half decent. So if I do before and after, it's doing a pretty good job, okay? Before and after, before and after. So it's doing a pretty decent job. And now if I play it through, right? Even if I put it here somewhere, it's pretty decent. It's not perfect, it's pretty good. Now, when we move over to Zohair, who is out of focus, we see this weird blocky artifacting thing happening. And it's not necessarily through our noise reduction, but then it's also not doing a great job removing this noise. This should be super, super smooth, right? It shouldn't be all these like little 
again, patchy artifacting that we're seeing. So just keep that in mind. Another thing that I want to show you is right here. You see, when you apply Resolve's noise reduction, it actually softens the texture of the area in your image. And most of the time, it does a pretty good job. So if we look at this, like it's doing a pretty good job, but it's also reducing the sharpening um, that you have to do things to kind of put back. Obviously, the, the pros are it is part of Resolve, so you don't have to pay extra. Second pro is that the playback is pretty quick. So just look at that, like we're getting near real time, which is excellent. What I'm gonna do is uh, I'm going to save this version, Command Y, and now I'm going to reset this. And now I'm gonna show you, this is the tool that is the end all be all. I've been using it since 2012. It's neat video. It basically, you get a third party plugin that you can use inside Resolve. And all you have to do here is just click on prepare noise profile. And as soon as you click on that, it takes you in here. And it is so smart that once I hit auto profile, it's gonna go ahead and pick out the most problematic area of this frame and then try to reduce noise. So just click auto profile and then see it's selecting this area that has a lot of like action happening here. And then it also gives you like a preview of the red channel and the blue channel. Right now the quality is set to 59 and it's basically set to a beginner mode. You can also uh, change that to advanced mode. I just leave everything to a beginner mode because neat video is so good. That's the beauty of it. Just set it and forget it. So that's all I picked. And then I'm gonna hit apply and now look at the results here, okay? If I go right in this area, and do before and after. I mean, just check this out. I'm gonna go slow so you guys can just really see. Before, look at this area. After, now let's go to Resolve's Noise Reduction and then this is Resolve's Noise Reduction right here. And if I were to do before and after, you see like how it just takes away so much of the sharpening because if we go to Neat and if I do before and after, it's genuinely leaving all of this as is and it's going around and just cleaning up everything else. And we can even see it here. Like, look at this. It does not mess with the sharpening whatsoever. And if I go back to Resolve's noise reduction, if I do before and after, you'll see like how it just, there's a little smear effect that happens is not very desirable to many. What people sometimes do is this. They'll go, okay, this, it's cleaning it up too much. I still want some of the grain back. Um, so. One of the things you can do is just go under basically the note key, which is the opacity of this note, and you can just split the difference. Bring this down to close to 0.5. And now see, we kind of split the difference. I personally don't love this method. So what I do instead is this. I leave that in full effect. And then I'm gonna go here and hit option S, create a node, and then we're gonna call it grain. Now, if anybody looking at this going, what the hell is going on, Kazi? You always put your grain upstream. Why are you putting it downstream? That's because if you're going to be using qualifiers in your node tree, you want it to get you the cleanest results. And for that reason, you want to put your grain downstream, not upstream, because grain is going to add an additional challenge for your key to like really give you better or cleaner results. Okay, so that's why you got to put grain here. And then after doing this, I'm just going to go to 35 millimeter 400 T and that will do it. If somebody's wondering why clean up your image if you're going to go back and add grain. Well, monochromatic grain is very different than noise. Noise lives in your RGB channels and that's what makes your image look gunky and dirty and digital. Whereas monochromatic grain adds texture to your footage and make it look more film-like. So if I punch in here and show you the difference is this. Like, look at, so this is just with neat, super, super pristine clean image. And then we just added grain. And now if we go to our resolve and look at what happened in resolve, resolve didn't do as clean of a job as neat. Plus it added that smear effect and a little bit of like less sharpening to our entire image. And then there was still some built-in grain or noise, if you will, was there. Whereas here, just look at how much more film-like this image is. We just went in, we cleaned up the image, then we added monochromatic grain of our own choice. We can put 16 millimeter and get that effect, 35 millimeter, get this effect. Now, the only caveat using neat is this. If I hit play, look at how slow this is. I'm getting four frames a second playback as opposed to 
with resolved noise reduction, which is going to be near real time. Look at this. So it's 20 frames instead of 24 frames. So that's the challenge. And you guys know my machine is maxed out and is still choking, which gets to tell you that the software is just not optimized for Mac. If you have an experience with PC and you've gotten better results, drop a comment below and let us know. I personally feel like the sacrifice is worth the result because it's just going to make all the difference in the world. And sometimes if you're using Resolve's noise reduction, you'll hear people talk about some sort of artifacting, like you'll see weird lines and stuff like that in like random frames. I have not experienced any of that with Neat. So obviously it's a paid plugin. They're not sponsoring this video. So like I have no incentive to like talk them up, but I've been using Neat since 2012. And this is my go-to tool when necessary. So this is like pulling out the big guns in this case, right? Like, look at, we had this and then we had to go from here to here. So need came into play. But if I wasn't going that hard, I would 85% of the times just use Resolve's noise reduction because it's more than good enough. It's part of Resolve. And if I'm ever handing off the project file to the client and if they don't have need, they don't have to worry about it, all those things. I can't stop thinking There you have it, guys. Do not forget to take advantage of the Cyber Monday special that is happening. It ends tonight. Link is in the description. Click on it. Learn more about the masterclass. It comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you're not losing anything. If day 30, this is not your cup of tea, hit me up. You're going to get your money back, so it's absolutely zero risk involved in this. Sign up for the masterclass. I will see you in the next video.